Welcome to the second lecture of the fifth method section of the Industrial Ecology Open Online course. This lecture is about the basics of multi-regional input-output analysis, MRIO. We'll have a recap of input-output tables and input-output models, learn about the basics of multi-regional input-output analysis, and have a quick look at the application of MRIO. In an input-output table, you have four system variables. We have first the final demand that the industry delivers to households and to government institutions. We have the intermediate consumptions that industry purchase from other industries, and we have the total output vector that comprises the outputs of all industrial sector. Finally, there's the value added, the capital and labor input to the different industries. It's important to know that there are two types of nodes in the input-output tables. There's the production nodes, we can also call them the industries, that transform different products into a sector-specific output, and there's the market nodes that distribute the output of the industries to other industries and to the final consumers. You can also take the system and have the different industries and markets separate or explicit, and then you can see that the value added is actually a vector of different value added inputs to different industries. The Z matrix is actually an array of flows from markets for specific commodities back to the industries. We have the output vector that has a one-to-one -one correspondence between the production nodes and the distribution nodes, and finally the final demand that goes from the distribution nodes or the markets to the point of final consumption. From the input-output table, we can define the matrix of technical, technical coefficients, which is the inter-industry flows Z normalized by the respective sectoral output X1, X2, and so on. In matrix notation, we can write this as Z times X hat inverse, where X hat is the output vector X put on the diagonal of a matrix, and inverse means we take, in this case, the inverse of each diagonal element. And when we do this specific matrix multiplication, we get the columns of the Z matrix divided by the respective industry output. So this is the matrix that tells you the relative input per unit of output for each industrial sector. Each column of the A matrix contains a so-called production recipe. With this A matrix defined, we can then derive the input-output model from the market balance. The market balance says that anything that is produced in the output vector X is either consumed by final consumers or it is sent to other industries. In matrix notation, it would be that X equals Z times E plus Y, where E is a summation vector that contains only ones, and Z times E is then the row sum of the Z matrix. We can replace Z by the definition of the A matrix, rearrange the brackets, and then we have the matrix, sorry, the market balance in terms of X, Y, and A. So X is A times X plus Y, where A times X is the intermediate consumption. We can resolve this equation for X, which gives us the Leontief input output model. It is also known that you can expand the Leontief inverse into a power series of powers of A, which gives you the different steps of the supply chain. You can add environmental extensions to input-output just by adding the different emissions to the input-output table and then normalizing those emissions by multiplying with X hat inverse from the right exactly in the same manner as we did it for the A matrix. We then get the different emissions per unit of sectoral output. A very important feature of input-output analysis is that it can handle different units. We can record services in euros, steel in kilograms, and electricity in terajoule. And when we do that system-wide, we can still calculate the row balance, which is the market balance for each commodity, by adding up the different flows in their respective unit. This means if we have an input-output model in mixed units, we can still write down the market balance and from the market balance derive the Leontief inverse. 
What is not possible in mixed unit is to write down the industry balance because the different Z flows have different units and they cannot be added up. When you take the A matrix and you compute the units of the different powers of the A matrix, you will realize that A square has exactly the same units as A also in the mixed unit case. A to the 3 has the same units as A and so on. And that means that also the Leontief inverse has for mixed units the same units as the A matrix, which means that it is possible to write down an input output model where all commodities have their respective own unit. Another feature of input output analysis is that you can group different processes and different commodities into larger groups or aggregations and you can use those as separate compartments of the A matrix. As illustration here, we have an A matrix that has different agricultural sectors and we can say there is a 2x2, two two, a square sub matrix, a block in the A matrix that is describes a subsystem for using agricultural products by other agricultural sectors. And we will use that principle to now switch to the multi-regional case for input-output analysis. In multi-regional input-output analysis, we take a certain industry, let's take the steel production, and we replicate it across all the different regions that we want to study. A typical example is we take the world economy and we split it into 50 or maybe 20 different countries. And in each country, there is a place for a steel sector in that country. Now, in the single regional case, each industry has one coefficient for using steel. In the multi-regional input-output case, each industry has n different positions for consuming steel, where n is the number of regions. So the car manufacturers in the EU can consume steel from the EU steel industries, from the Chinese steel industries, or from other world regions. And there is a separate coefficient in the A matrix in these different compartments for each region. The same applies to the car manufacturing sector in China, which has the opportunity to buy steel at, on the EU markets, on Chinese markets, and in other world regions, and so on for all world regions. So the multi-regional A matrix is divided into n times n different blocks, where each block gives you the input of region M into the industries of region N. Each region and each industry in each region has the chance to buy their input from all the other regions. A short note on how those input-output A matrices are compiled. A good explanation is given in Miller and Blair, chapter 3.4, and here I just want to talk a bit about the basics. In an ideal situation, we start with the so-called single regional A matrices. So these are the technical coefficients for each industry in each region, without any trade or link to other regions. Then we build a matrix of trade coefficients, where the trade is arranged in a specific order. Again, details are explained in Miller and Blair. So that when you multiply this trade coefficient array to those single regional A matrices, you split the A matrix of the first region into one part that tells you the input from the first region into the first region, an input from the second region into the first region, and an input of the industries from the third regions into the industries from the first region, and so on for all A matrix in all regions. The multi-regional input-output A matrix has the feature that if you take a column here of these A matrices that link different regions to one, the industries in one regions, and you add these up, you end up at the single region input-output. A matrix. Just a quick example, let's say the steel industry buys a certain amount of coke per unit of steel, then this amount of coke in the multi-regional case is split into coke from the first region, coke from the second region, 
and coke from the third regions and so on for all products in all industries with this multi-regional input output a matrix defined i can then build the multi-regional leontiev inverse and do the same supply chain analysis as i do in a single regional case by multiplying l to the final demand vector y and then i get the multi-regional input output there's a subtlety here that is very important the y vector itself is also also multi-regional so i can take the final consumption of the u28 and i need to split that consumption into input from different regions so i have consumers in the eu that buy vehicles and those vehicles come either from the eu then they would be recorded here or they come from china they would be recorded here or from other regions they would be recorded here so the same as for the a matrix where we split the input of coke per steel into coke from the different regions we also take the final demand in one country and split it using trade data into final demand purchased from the markets in different regions and then my y is not a vector it's actually a matrix because for each region i have a separate final demand column and each final demand column for each region then has different compartments depending on where in the world the consumption in a certain region comes from as in the single regional input output model i can also add environmental extensions and i do this by recording the emissions of greenhouse gases the water use and so on for the industries in the different regions and adding this emissions inventory to the multi-regional input output table the illustration is here i have the a matrix on the top that gives you the consumption of products from a certain region by another region and we have the emissions of all the industries in that region so for each column we have a number of industries that we record in xi base for example we have 163 industries in 49 regions and for each of these 163 industries in for each region we have a complete emissions inventory and then the mathematics is exactly the same as in the single regional case i can normalize my emissions vector by dividing total emissions by industry output so this means it is the b emissions matrix times x hat inverse that gives you the s the stressor matrix and then your total emissions are s times x or s times l times y so the example would be here your final demand is maybe the total consumption of passenger vehicles in england and it's broken down into passenger cars actually manufactured in england and consumed in england cars imported from germany and consumed in england cars imported from Sta spain from the us from china from japan and so on so all these products are linked to the final consumption vector in england and then you have the international trade network and supply chains and the result is an emissions vector that gives you the different emissions that happen anywhere in the world in all the different industries and the different supply chain connected to your y vector you can also expand this equation if you want to know which products contribute to emissions or if you want to know in which industries those emissions actually occur we have a software workbook in the section 5 of the course where this is demonstrated for an aggregated version of xi base we can apply the multi-regional input output analysis to calculating footprints of consumptions across the world this is a quite famous application for example we can calculate the carbon footprints of the total final consumptions in different countries and illustrate how much carbon is embodied in the supply chain of the commodities consumed and we can also apply the same footprint logic to other extensions here is an example for the water footprint there's examples for social footprints like labor and employment where we have a link here and a wide array of other footprints including material and land with this i want to close this lecture